Hi, so in today's episode, I'm going to go through the keyframe section inside the app tour. So the keyframe is a feature similar to the After Effects animation timeline. We are scroll driven instead of time driven. So how it moves is relative to how much you have scroll in the page. And so I'm going to just follow this app tour and create a scroll animation. So first, let's draw a box and click on the button on top to open our keyframe panel. And now I select this container and I add, add a keyframe. And after the page have moved for 100 VH, I'm going to set the radius as 100. So actually, when you do any changes, it's going to automatically create a keyframe for you. And now let's go back to zero and check how it looks. When I'm scrolling, it's going to gradually become a circle. And next, it's called a fixed container when scrolling. So for example, I want a nav bar or I want a sticky background. Fixed container is useful at this moment. So I'm going to select the thing that I want it to be fixed and choose add a driver from container. And set fix. And stop at the place that I want it to be unfixed. Like, at the keyframe, but close the fix. I'm going to set the animation, which is turning the orange square into a circle. So start at 100 at a keyframe. Drag it to the right at 200 and set the radius at 100. And now when I pre let's preview. This white background is going to stay fixed, but the orange is going to animate. Then I'm going to talk about some advanced tips for this keyframe. The first one I want to talk about is driver. As you might notice, when you open the keyframe feature, on the bottom it says drivers on the specific page. And if I click on one specific container, there will be a button showing add a driver from section 1. So what does this mean and what is the use of it? So for now, I have a scroll animation on this page. As the viewport enters each section and moves, the animation would happen. Viewport means the size of the device you are using. And the default here is the size of the desktop, but you could set it as other device, for example, phone or tablet. So here the animation is like when the viewport moves into this section completely, then there's gonna, the animation is gonna happen. As I'm dragging this scroll Y, you can see the dash box is like moving. So the value here refers to the viewport height value of this. This is like a hundred viewport height. And this is a hundred viewport height as well. As now I am in the desktop view, so a hundred VH will be uh, 1024 pixels. Uh, if I'm on an iPhone 14 Pro, uh, 100 VH would be 852 pixels. So why do we need to use drivers? As I'm, for example, now I did three sections and then I just don't want the first section. I delete it and I put it here. If I move, you will realize this is not working. I want this shape to animate when the viewport is going down. But now when the viewport is in section three, the orange block starts to animate because I use absolute value. The absolute value is the scroll Y, the scroll VH. The absolute value is the absolute thing of this whole canvas. However, if I set drivers for each specific section, then that's gonna, that's gonna be different. For example, now I, Take this away, I put this on top. And now as the viewport is leaving, it's animating correctly. This is not using an absolute value of the canvas, but it is using the like relative value of the specific section. Say here I have section two, I set a driver for it. So it's telling the system that whenever this viewport enters the section, like no matter where the section is, then you start to animate. Zero means that when the viewport is entering this section here, 
and a hundred means that this enters this section completely because the height of this section is a hundred vh. When you have complex animations like multiple sections in your page, we definitely recommend you to use like drivers to set your animations. This is gonna provide more flexible when you have to change in the future. And also one tips for creating the animations is if you click on this, you could choose how you want this to move, like ease in and ease out. If it's not default and it has, you have set a specific stuff on it, it's gonna show an orange color. Next, I want to talk about tips in using the fixed view. When you want to make something sticky onto the page, you use fixed view. And for many times, we don't want it to stay, stay fixed all the time, but we want it to be like fixed in a certain moment, especially when you're doing like scroll animations and you want the background to be fixed. So here, let's set this section as driver. What I want is when the viewport enters it completely, which is like 100, it's gonna stay fixed. And then when, and then it's gonna move for 100. And then it's not gonna be fixed anymore. Blue square to become circle. Like this. So let's preview and see what's gonna happen. Just now it is below this regular, but now it's not in the correct place because if I wanted to start to move at a certain moment and stay fixed, I have to go one step before and set its position first. So I'm gonna connect it to this yellow one, this regular box, and then add a keyframe here. Then at a hundred when it enters, then I set fixed view. Just gonna this is gonna fix this before the viewport enters it. And here I'm gonna close the fix. So I want it to not be fixed anymore. And also make sure you add a constraint, upward constraint at the last frame of not fixing. And since we have moved 100 VH, set this as 100 VH. It's really important to set the up constraint and use when you're using the fixed view, or else it's gonna really jump around. And yeah, that's all for this um, keyframe tutorial, and see you in the next episode.